Crackberry.com. Welcome to the Crackberry Podcast, special edition CES 2014 edition for Thursday, January 9th, 2014. Hey, everybody, it's Kevin here for Crackberry.com. It's a special edition podcast. We're at CS Live 2014. <laughs> Marcus Adelson laughing at the end. Special guest, CEO of Mobile Nations, Adam Zeiss, Greetings. the managing editor of CrackRay.com and the editor in chief of Smartwatch Fans, serving double duty, working harder than ever. It's about time, but you're doing Amazing. a great job this show. Burning my keep. <laughs> Simon Sage, the tallest man at the show. We're oh. not sure what he's up to, but we can spot him everywhere. So we know he's, doing, <laughs> you know, he's always working hard. I don't know what he's doing, but he still we know has where a job, he is. Guys. <laughs> Apparently. We, we still have him here. <laughs> Now, uh, we're doing a special podcast for this show. We've got a couple of uh, things to talk about. It's been not the biggest show from a BlackBerry announcement standpoint, kind of like last year, but that hasn't stopped us from creating some stories and getting some news. Um, probably the biggest thing to talk about, though, is our lunch with BlackBerry CEO John Chen. So on Tuesday at 12 noon, just as things were kicking off on the live show, uh, Marcus and I were at the Monte Carlo Hotel meeting John the Real Deal Chen for... Uh, Is that his nickname officially? That's my, that's <laughs> that's my official nickname. That's, that's my nickname card. for him. The Real Deal. And uh, we had an interesting lunch. I mean, you, you know, we chatted for an hour. Uh, we talked about, you know, some things just us venting about, I think, the, the pain points we've seen in, in Crackberry Nation and among the BlackBerry fan user base, the real consumer user base. And then, um, you know, we went on the record, and we'll be bringing that interview later. But, you know, Marcus, maybe you can kind of give us your take on, on that to start with. Sure. I mean, John, you know, fresh set of blood, right? He's, uh, he's bringing in his own executive team to, to shake things up, which, which is uh, probably needed. He outlined a very good pitch on how he's breaking the company out into four separate departments, and, and each of those are, are going to be, you know, managed as, as its own company. We'll have... Uh, BBM messaging devices, BES, and um, what's the fourth one? Uh, the fourth one is QNX. On QNX, of. of course. So QNX, you know, has been. Let's start with QNX. That's easy. He said, it's running, it's working, it's doing its thing. We'll keep investing in it. They have a lot of really good royalties, high margin stuff coming in, and he doesn't seem to be overly concerned about you know that part of the company, right? It's just running. Yeah. BBM, he was super excited. 40 million downloads. You know, we don't know the active user base, but yeah. uh, it will be. It will continue to grow. They did demo BBM 2.0 for iOS and Android at this show, yeah. and uh, so we'll have them coming up later on the uh, right. on the live show, talking about all those new features. You know, still an uphill battle, right? There's there's a lot of other m messaging platforms out there, but and at least now they're in their fighting. But, and then devices, you know, John uh, was excited about the uh, outsourcing some of the production and development and inventory risk. To Foxconn. To Foxconn. Yeah. That will be the low-end phone, which is going to mostly target uh, the uh, emerging markets. And then they're still working on some high-end stuff, you know, in-house. But what he really wanted to focus on was the device management, but to extend that to like mobile security. Right. And and uh, it's a good pitch, you know, he's really going after regulatory environments, so government, banks, and uh, want to be able to sell the MDM solution uh, as, a, as a solution that's not only for BlackBerry, but you know, for every device. And yeah. that product is out there today, they just need to do a better job marketing it, right? They don't sure. have a corporate sales team anymore. He really wants to build that up uh, to be able to reach, to reach that clientele. Yeah. But, um, there's a lot of competitors in each one of those divisions, right? Yeah. So they definitely have the work cut out for them. Yeah, I think one of the things that this strategy is doing is there's a lot of people out there who think, okay, BlackBerry, BlackBerry's dead, nobody's buying BlackBerry phones anymore. And the message he's trying to get across by separating it into these four pillars in the organization is to say, no, no, we're not just BlackBerry, the handset company. We do a whole bunch of stuff, and the story is different on each of those segments and uh, we're going to address each one kind of individually. So yeah, there's still one overall strategy, but, but people focus only on devices all the time, and, it, and you know, that's been bringing down the business a little bit. But he's taking that off the table, right? He says, okay, Foxconn done. Don't talk about us losing money on handsets anymore. Sure. We no longer have that risk. We're going to be good. Uh, you know, BBM, it's an investment right now. We see the growth, it's going well. 
Enterprise, we have, we're, you know, we make margin there. It's competitive. We're going to invest in that more to, to keep accelerating, but we're still number one in the world in this side of the business. Sure. So I think that's what he's hoping that investors realize, Wall Street realizes, and, and maybe consumers start to realize too, because it's really hard to work in a, uh, a sentiment where, you know, in the chat room, people say BB is dead, lots of laughs. And the thing is, that, that's the struggle, right? You have to realize where you're at and build a strategy that addresses that. And 2014, uh, you know, John said, and, and we kind of positioned it for him, but he agreed. This isn't a magic bullet year. Uh, you know, 2013, we were looking for the launch of BB10. We put, you know, BB10 was supposed to be the savior, right? That was sure. the savior, right? <laughs> Not, it wasn't a Hail Mary pass, it was a good strategy, but they banked everything on those devices hitting, the user base upgrading, hopefully getting some new sales, and then we're off and running. And you know the CrackBerry readership upgraded. We, sure. we know we saw that the millions come, I think, from our core audience, but it never hit the broader mainstream. And, and now this year, they're just rolling up their sleeves in every direction, and uh, and that's what they're getting done. But Adam, QNX, beautiful QNX. cars. They did, yeah. We've uh, you know we've seen QNX pretty much every year here, I think, and we've always got to meet with them. They, I think, pretty much every other year, they always brought one car. You know, they had the QNX Porsche last year was the QNX Bentley. Um, but this year they actually brought two cars. Well, they had three. They had a, a Jeep Sahara Wrangler too, which I think we've seen before. But they brought a Kia Soul to show off their uh, the QNX acoustic technologies, and then they also had a Mercedes CLA 45 AMG, um, which is you know the standard QNX car that we know, which has the, the tricked out dashboard <laughs> or dashboard and things like that. So I actually I really enjoyed being in the Kia. You know, it's got they have this quirky uh, technology where it's um, they have noise canceling technology, so it. it uses the, the acoustics in the car and the speakers to balance out the road noise. Right. Um, you know, so they actually played like simulated road noise with cars passing and going over bumps and stuff like that. And then they put this cancellation on, you know, and it really, it, it muzzles everything so it's not as loud in the cabin, which is cool. But the most fun part for me, um, their technology, which they're gearing kind of towards electric cars. You know, there's a lot of people that say since electric cars don't have uh, an engine noise per se, you know, like a Prius or maybe if you happen to own a Tesla, I don't know anybody right. that does, but um, <laughs> you can you can make these engine noises. So we're, we're sitting in the Kia and they have it all connected, you know, and they had this tablet there and they tap on, you know, BMW M3 or Dodge Challenger and right. then they have me hit the gas and it, it gives you this engine noise and this feedback. Okay, Marcus, as a Tesla as owner, that car. do you feel Marcus you need your fake I don't, noise? I don't think that's needed at all, right? I mean, uh, I really love the uh, noise cancellation. I want it sure. quiet in my car. Why do I want to you know, muffle that up with, with fake engine sound? Well, it's right. probably more for pedestrians, isn't it? Yeah, I think a lot of it is, is externally, you know, for you for want to hear so the car that's you're, you're rolling by in your Tesla, you know, and they can't hear you coming, then it kind of well, kind of blasts it out. I think GM does something similar, with, or, or maybe it's Ferrari with some okay. of their cars, where they just kind of just amp, you know, it's too yeah. quiet inside the cabin. They just need that engine well, sound. They have it too, where they, um, you know, they make it because they say more and more car manufacturers are kind of messing with things for be it fuel efficiency or whatever they're kind of tweaking in their motors, and they want to keep that, you know, that classic sound of their car intact. You know, the classic Corvette sure. sound, the classic Dodge sound intact. So they're substituting in these, you know, these synthetic sounds to, to keep yeah. that there. No, no it makes what total. I, I think BMW did that with a new M5. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't read up with it, but for the same reason, the engine is too well buffered behind the firewall sure, yeah. that you just don't hear it. Then people that buy a sports car, yeah. they want to hear the engine yeah, they're revving. So now they get their fake revving in. Right. Uh, I just so. want the Jetson sound car. Right. <laughs> there you I'm go. Sure, they could work that out. That'd be amazing. So, so they had that in the Kia. That was all the, you know, the acoustic stuff. And then we shipped it over to the Mercedes and. You know, that was the standard, um, you know, they have this huge screen in the dash and they have the instrument cluster which you can tweak around and, um, you know, they showed off the media controls and they did the, the full duplex calling which they always right. do, you know, where you can tell which person talking, whether the passenger seat or the driver's seat um, and stuff like that, you know, and it's all connected and it actually runs Android apps. So they played like the iHeartRadio Android app, you know, they had it connected to Sony Xperia. Um, and it was pretty cool. And we did. We got to see Dan Dodge for a little bit. It was sad that you couldn't. Yeah, make so it. you saw Super Dan Dodge. Super, Super Dan Dodge. He was good. I mean, you know, I, I wore my CrackBerry T-shirt and I kind of rolled in there. You know, first thing he says, of course, is like, "Oh, where's Kevin? Kevin couldn't make it." And I was like, "I was oh, having lunch oh, with Marcus he's got and John." Something slightly more important to do right now. <laughs> oh, you know, but, Dan's super important. But he was funny because you know we got in the Kia and I brought Mark to do the video. So I got him with Phil, who's doing the demo in the front seat. Mark sat in the back, and then you know I kind of look around and I see Dan just kind of sneak his way <laughs> into the back seat. And I thought he was going to kind of give us a spiel and do a demo, but he just sat there. You know, I think he was just excited to be, you know, in with the technology, seeing it and everything, and he, awesome. he, he let off a little bit at the end. But yeah, it was fun, you know, we always love seeing QNX here at the show, for sure. And coming back to lunch with John and talking about QNX a little bit, it was one of those areas where, you know, I think it's a, it's a solid part of the business. It's a part of the business that BlackBerry acquired from Harman, um, 
but it's one that, you know, they've obviously been really distracted because those are the same guys who've built BB10 for the most sure. part, right? Putting that QNX base in it and, and having those teams kind of really work on getting BB10 out the door. Uh, so it'll be interesting to, to see now where they continue to push QNX because, you know, John made it really clear that, you know, computer to computer, machine to machine is the future and he really thinks that QNX base has a lot of legs there. Sure. Yeah, I think with QNX and their car partnerships, they just need to start shipping, right? So we've yeah. seen these high-end cars, oh, yeah. and, and uh, even at BlackBerry Live last year, they showed, oh, look how amazing the car's getting a firmware upgrade over there. Mm -hmm. And everyone is like applauding. I'm like, my car's already doing that. Right. You need to get it into the market, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. Well, and I guess that's the question is, why isn't it happening yet? You know, are, we know these car companies have quite long lead There's times. probably really long lead you know, so in getting it, it in. But is this that they're looking at other, op like, are there other options to QNX in this space? We know there's sure. some. I mean, you look at, look at what Microsoft is doing with the Ford Sync. They've right. de developed that a lot. Mercedes, uh, I guess, is using QNX yeah. primarily. Uh, but there's a, and we've seen a lot of new Android driven. Right, and Android's what I'm wondering, you know, is this what companies are starting to look at? And there may be, a, you know, more, the more software that gets out there and, you know, the embedded hardware for these, uh, like the Tesla is just running on a Integra 4 chipset, right? right. And, a, and a big screen, so the, the hardware is not super complex these days. And, you know, maybe there'll be fairly low margin uh, software yeah. out there eventually that can do all of this fancy stuff. We'll see. It's we'll see. They got to pick it up across the board, right? And they will be this year. Uh, one thing, I'm trying to think of things we talked to John about that the, uh, the Crackberry audience would want to know. So, oh, somebody asked me to ask about BlackBerry Live, and you know, they, they obviously announced it's canceled, so are they planning something else? You know, maybe uh, going back to the roots of Wireless Enterprise Symposium. And what John told us there is, you know, they're going to take that budget, but they're, they're more so going to give it, they're going to put it where people are going, you know, sure. sponsoring CIO events and that kind of thing. And, uh, and take their message where... where take their message to a lot of other trade shows. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, I mean, you, you take a look at general sentiment towards CES, you know, there, there's a lot of press who are just jaded by the whole thing that, uh, you know, there's a lot of travel involved, a lot of logistics, and a, a lot of this stuff can be done virtually, you know, you, yeah. you, you, you just shoot at the press releases, you could have webcasts, there's a lot of alternatives that are a lot less expensive that, that BlackBerry can pursue. Yeah. He was also very excited about the new, uh, the new recruit they have on the device side of the business, who's going to be, no, I forget his name now, Mark, Mark Coots, I want to say. I forget the name from the press release. It's too know. new, there's so much change it's happening for, so fast. The bus here. I don't remember. Come on, Adam, yeah, it was Blaze who wrote Sorry. the blog post up, and, and we've been busy. Smart watches. But uh, this is a guy who, I guess John Chen found, and you know, he, was very, you know, he was very quick to say, like John comes from more of an engineering background, he's got very good business management, you know, strategy, tactics, he knows the play he's after, but he's not the, hardware device visionary who's going to say that's how you build the greatest phone that you know Simon Sage is going to love and hold. Uh, but he, he's found the guy who's confident, has that, those chops, and in working with you know, Foxconn on that relationship, um, that's something they're going to really work on. So we, we only have about three minutes left, I'm told, so is there anything maybe that sure, you, yeah. you want to talk about before we well, have to wrap up? Like I said, we're going to do the full out interview piece with, uh, with John Chen, so stay tuned to Crack Ray for that. The other big stories of the show, so one of course. Big stories to some people. Yeah, to me, I finally got my, my P9982. It's a glorious phone. $1,990, $105 for the blue back, and another $105 for this guy. Wow. And you had to buy the case? Oh, yeah. You didn't tell me that. I thought it was included. <laughs> no, no. Didn't you see the, the bill was on the video. It was 2400 um, all said and done. Totally right. worth covering right? the case. The and phone. the other big story of the show is this guy. Kevin's had a very good show with the typo keyboard. Technology we Ryan Seacrest's. Uh, uh, invent, well, he put in money. Investor. And he, <laughs> he and invented Investor. It. He didn't invent it. Other camera. But it is oh, absolutely yeah. a BlackBerry keyboard for your iPhone. And I did a fancy video. You guys can watch it. Um, it's like everybody hates me now because like BlackBerry users are like, oh my god, why are you pimping a keyboard for the iPhone? And then he just loves his keyboard. Ryan Seacrest hates me because I'm like, there's no way you're getting away with this because you've so blatantly ripped off uh, a BlackBerry keyboard. It's not even funny. But it actually works pretty well. I'm not going to lie about that. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. I, I'm at an era now where I prefer my, my Blackberries with a touchscreen and my iPhones with a keyboard. So 
I don't know what that means, but so it, it works. In, in terms of what's actually going to happen to Typo, do you think that BlackBerry is going to be able to get licensing fees out of this, or, or wow. do you think they're, they're going to shoot it down entirely? BlackBerry is getting paid one way or another or shooting it down. <laughs> I mean, my, my theory would be, or what I'd love to see is just like buy them or figure it out. I mean, John Chen has said, yeah, we want to bring the BlackBerry experience to other platforms. We're starting to do it with BBM. Maybe there's other ways they'll build apps for other platforms. I think, though, BlackBerry's device strategy has a lot of keyboard stuff going in it, so you're more likely to maybe see it get shut down than, uh, than anything else. Sure. It's gonna but be a, we'll it's see. It's going to be a typo for typo, you know what I'm saying? I mean, saying? the other thing, too, is it's, it's, they made conscious yeah. design decisions oh, yeah. to make it look like that. Right. Conceptually, they could probably change it and change enough percentage-wise to then sell it, and it'll st still work as well. But this iteration, there's on it, I'm not a lawyer, but there's no way, no how this can be on the market right. very long. To be that's fair, it. Like that's it, it. it makes typing great on iPhone. You know, it's uh, yeah. Well, and last thing, you know, people think, oh, I can type faster on a touchscreen. Of course you can. I can type way faster on a touchscreen than a physical keyboard. But as soon as I got this this week at the show, I'm able to walk and type and you know run into things. But <laughs> normally, what I would do is stop what I'm doing and type my message. It's really inefficient. So when you put that physical keyboard on, it's that you can type faster while doing stuff. Mm -hmm. sure. It's a big difference. And on that note. Thanks for this uh, tuning into this special edition Crackberry Podcast live from CES 2014. CES Where can live. people find you, Marcus? Find me on Twitter at M Adolfson. Good Adam luck Zeiss. On that one. Yeah. Smartwatchfans.com, Twitter at A Zeiss. Simon Sage. Twitter.com slash Simon Sage. And I am Kevin Mitchell. And you can find me at Kevin Mitchell everywhere. Also at Crackberry Kevin. I'm embracing everything. Cage Michaels too. Cage Michaels. It's crazy. Kevin out. We're out. Jump off the stage. Yoo! Okay. <laughs>